The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Johnny Green and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Life Begins When You're in Love. a fragrance or a taste often brings us back very pleasant memories. So if you're away from home sometime and you're missing a touch of real homey feeling, go into a restaurant and wind up your meal with Jell-O. You can count on Jell-O being just as good in a restaurant as at home, but you must make sure you get genuine Jell-O. No other gelatin dessert has Jell-O's extra rich, twice as good fruit flavor. No other has found Jell-O's secret of capturing that luscious, ripe fruit taste and sealing it right in. So if you want the best, always order Jell-O by name. Whether you order at a grocer's, in a restaurant, or hotel, insist on the one and only genuine Jell-O. And now we bring to you a man who took Horace Greeley's advice and went west, then took Jell-O's advice and came back east, Jack Benny. I'm sick, eh? <laughs> Jell-O again. This is Jack Benny coming to you with the latest old jokes and quips through the uh, courtesy of... Um... Of, uh, uh, what is that name again, Don? Jell-O. That's right, of course. I'm so bad at remembering names. Yeah, I can understand that, Jack. I don't mention Jell-O very often. No, Don, only every time you exercise your lips. <laughs> well, uh, Jack, Jell-O is so easy to say and so much easier to eat, and that's why it's the largest selling gelatin dessert in the world. You see, folks, what Don is really trying to prove is that this is not a toothpaste program. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> not changing the subject, Jack, <laughs> but uh, I believe you had a birthday this month, didn't you? Yes, Don, February the 14th. I'm a little valentine. Well, well, well. Congratulations, and how old are you, Jack? What's that? I said, how old are you? Oh, yes. Tonight, folks, we are beginning a contest. <laughs> the one I started to tell you about last week in which every member of your family can participate. Well, you certainly don't look it. Thanks. <laughs> Come on, Jack, how old are you? Now, what are you ashamed of? Well, Don, you know life begins at 40. Yes? And that makes me just two years old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, all I can say is that I hope you live to be 100. It won't be long now. Hello, Jack. <laughs> Hello, Mary. I just thought I'd drop in and earn the few bucks I get here. Well, that's nice. Say, Mary, you know I had a birthday two days ago. I know it, Jack. Here's a present I brought you. Oh, thanks. Hmm, a book. What's it about? Uh, how to prevent rheumatism at your age. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I'm not that old. <laughs> Say, Jack, your birthday was February the 14th, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Why, what are you laughing at? See, if you'd have waited eight days more, you'd been the father of our country. <laughs> mm. I suppose if I'd have been born two days sooner, I'd be Abraham Lincoln. Yeah? Imagine your face on a penny. <laughs> well, anyway, Mary, it's a great honor to be born in the same month as Lincoln and Washington. Imagine the three of us crowded into such a short month. I don't know how February did it. <laughs> yes, Jack, it certainly is a great honor. Yeah. Jack Benny, first in war, first in peace, and second in the Crosley Report. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. Who's there? I can't tell a lie. It's Kenny Baker. Oh, oh, come in, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Happy New Year. What? Uh, I mean, happy birthday. That guy can't even read. No. <laughs> Well, Kenny, you've been in New York a whole week now. How are you getting along? Fine, Jack. Gee, it's one thrill after another. Now, have you been to a Madison Square Garden yet? Yeah, I was there last week. I saw a bunch of fellows on skates with big sticks beating up a donut. 
<laughs> Kenny, listen, they were playing hockey. No, they all showed up. <laughs> Baker singing Moon Over Miami. And now, ladies and gentlemen, understand the moon isn't over it right now. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, a <if> possible. <laughs> that flopped, didn't it? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, if possible, without further interruption, I would like to tell you about our contest. Tonight we are starting a contest that really does require brains. Why don't you start something we can all play? Uh, we're not in it. Well, anyway, folks, this contest will go on for a period of ten weeks, at the end of which time three valuable prizes will be given away. To the winner, the first prize will be a cash payment amounting to... <laughs> hmm. The mailman. <laughs> Mary, hold this bag of gold. We'll give it away yet. Okay. Here's your letter, Jack. Hmm. Dear Mr. Benny... We have been listening to all of your programs. Why don't you open it? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, dear Mr. Benny, we have been listening to all... Honey says the same inside there, doesn't it? We've been listening to all of your programs and have enjoyed your new series very much. But as your program is only half a uh, half hour and you only work half of that, would like to know what you do with the rest of your time. My three sons are also loafers. <laughs> and would appreciate a few pointers from you. Sign Mrs. Hugo Chase. Hmm. Mary, take an answer. Will you? Hey, wait a minute, will you? Uh, dear Mrs. Hugo Chase, received your letter, and I'm very happy to know that you like our program. Hmm. <laughs> Regarding my spare time, I beg to state that besides being on the air, I am also a druggist. <laughs> Having studied chemistry, physiology, and pastrami. Make that uh, hot pastrami, Mary. How do you spell hot? Hmm, some secretary. Well, I get paid for my look. Oh, continue the letter. I have my own drugstore, and I might add our program has helped uh, my aspirin business tremendously. If you care to listen in, I'll be back to work immediately after the next number. Did you get that, Mary? Yes, but there's no ribbon in the typewriter. 
<laughs> Mary, what do you do in your spare time? I certainly do. Hmm. Play, John. 